Welcome to the K Car Special. We're gonna talk about the Suzuki Cappuccino, the Honda Beat, and the Suzuki Alta Works. We're gonna drive all three and we're gonna just compare and see which one is the most worth it for that price. First and foremost, we'll start off with the Suzuki Alto. This one is a front wheel drive turbo automatic. So the most practical in the bunch by far, it is 7,500. It's part of the raffle right now. So unfortunately you won't be able to buy it, but you can check it out. This one has AC, door cards and everything is pretty nice. Has power windows, headliner. We can pop the hood. Here's what you have under the hood. This one is a single cam. The cappuccino is a dual overhead cam. So that's a difference in speed and a couple little other things. But here's how it looks under here. Pretty clean. No real issues or imperfections. No rust over the strut towers. It's a nice looking car. Here's a look at the front end. I love the fog lights in the front end look just in general. You can check out the spoiler back here. Here's a look at the sides, has a little imperfection there, but it does have some cool Daihatsu rims. Other side is mint. This opens like that. It's a little too close to that, so I'm not going to open it. Here's the key to the Suzuki. I'm going to start it right now. All the lights light up. We'll drive this one a little bit around the lot. All right, so off the back, this car is obviously the most comfortable, the most practical by far. My seat even goes back more. And most importantly, I could do this. None of the other two cars can do that. So you could sleep back here. You can just chill back here. You can go on a long trip and just be like, oh, I'm tired of driving. Let me just lay back a little bit. You can't really do that in the cappuccino or the beat. So that's one big pro on the Suzuki. And it's automatic, which to each his own. I get it. Automatics are definitely a little more scarier to take on. I'm gonna spend all this money do I really want to get myself an automatic but now that I'm in an automatic though I can just sit like this I can cruise I can chill and this one is still front wheel drive and turbo I don't think it's as fast as the cappuccino but it definitely is just as peppy probably faster than the beat most likely I'm gonna be honest I'm gonna gun it down this other road but right now I'm just chilling enjoying the time I got my power windows let me put them up really quickly and I'll gun it right here. Yeah, this thing is fast. You even hear the turbo spools. This one is gonna be hard to beat when it comes to worth it. Like for 7,500, this is the cheapest car out of the three. It's the most spacious. It's the most, I don't wanna say the most luxurious, but the fact that I'm able to do like stuff like this, just put my seat up and back. It still has AC, it still has a radio, it still has all the good stuff, it still has wipers. I think it even has a, yeah, it even has a rear wiper. Where's the button to that? It even has a rear wiper. It has all the good amenities and you can fit more people in this car. I would say the biggest con on this car, no one naming a lot of pros, is the fact that it's automatic just far as driving experience goes. The other two cars we're comparing it to, one's a baby NSX and the other one is a t-top slash convertible turbo little monster if this one was manual i think it would be even harder to choose which one is more worth it but let's drive the honda beat next because that one's in the middle that one's only eight thousand and then we'll drive the cappuccino which i think is around like 85 or maybe eight thousand as well but this one is definitely the cheapest in the bunch i'll show you guys the interior one last time everything works everything is nice and clean like look how much leg room i have compared to the dash look how much arm room i have i even have something here the cappuccino definitely does not have that like i mentioned you got back seats not the most spacious but at least you have rear seats but here we have it the suzuki ultra works 7500 1996 automatic ac 132 kilometers front wheel drive so number two on the list is going to be the honda beat the oh so glorious baby nsx so this one is mid-engine it has a frunk cool zebra seat and it is a drop top this one is 8,000 in comparison to 7,500. we'll check out the interior on this guy first door cards are pretty nice also power windows this seat is immaculate this one has the common little imperfections. I feel like 99% of B owners all have this problem. Nice cool cluster, 124,000 kilometers. It has the stock radio, which is nice. It has these speakers, which are nice. 
We'll drop the top in a second. Has a little bit of storage here, nothing too crazy. A little bit of storage there, again, nothing too crazy. Clean shift knob. I love the wheel. Like the wheel on this one is so good. Has some little air intakes right here that are actually functional. Comes with the stock beat wheels too. I know a lot of people love those. Has a spoiler, which I think improves the look as well. Unfortunately, the top is ripped, so that is definitely one con. But paint-wise and body-wise, there really isn't many imperfections. I think this one is definitely a very clean candidate. It doesn't need to be wrapped. It doesn't really need anything. It's pretty nice. Now let me pop the trunk, aka the hood. And here you have your glorious storage for your road trips, along with a new battery, which is nice. You can see some of the engine here not much i think you put in oil from here someone let me know one of you honda guys but here's really all the excitement back here not much it is a baby nsx though like i said so that's cool and then let me pop the frunk here you have your spare tire some other little things you have a jack if I had this car, I would definitely take this out, try to clean this up as much as possible. And I would definitely call this the poor man's Ferrari. And if I'm going shopping with a girl or something, I'm definitely telling, oh yeah, put your bags over here. Like we gotta flex this. Like this isn't really any storage. I would need to take that out and put like some carpet or something and just make this look as flush as possible. This one is definitely a lot more roomier than the cappuccino. I love the cluster too with the white face. Look at the lights light up. Starts right up. Has an ETC reader, which is gonna talk to me in a couple seconds. Very comfortable as far as here goes too. Like when I close the door, like focus on this really quickly before we get to the cappuccino. The door is closed. I'm in a really good driving position and have this much room. Like really focus on this. I have a lot of room to do this. I don't feel like I'm squished. Like. I'm good, I'm good. I'm like 5'9", I'm very comfortable right now. I could do a 10 hour road trip in a car just like this without a issue. And then to drop the top, I'm not gonna do it just cause it has a crack and I don't wanna make it any worse, but you just have to push this, go down, and it unhooks from this guy right here. You see this little box? It unhooks from that. Same with this, you would push, go down, unhook it from there, and then you would just clip it back like that, and then boom off top top down closing it is the same process we just hook it there snap it like that hook it there snap it like that and boom you got your soft top back on now let's drive the honda beat i am very comfortable right now i even have room to do this the honda beats have one of the best interiors as far as like little roadster goes like it isn't as big as a miata but for a car being this size for this to be as roomy as i am right now it's actually very impressive especially compared to the cappuccino but Let's start to drive. I'm in my baby NSX right now. Mid-engine. Not turbo, unfortunately, like the other two, but still pretty cool, pretty fun driving experience. Some pros for the Honda Beat. One, aftermarket support on this car is amazing. You can buy almost anything still from Japan. I see a lot of people with Beats and I see them go way crazier on mods than I see on cappuccinos and also I see a lot of Beats just in general. I think even like form wise and like part support and just like YouTube videos, like if something were to go wrong, I think it's a lot easier to find someone to help you on the internet or just in life with the Honda Beat in comparison to the cappuccino and the also. And that's what it being mid-engine and much easier to access. Two, when it comes to dropping the top, this thing is a matter of just boom, boom, you're done. When it comes to the cappuccino, it's a lot harder, so we're not really gonna talk too much about that. But it's much easier to drop the top on this and just go boom, you're done, you're ready to go. And then three has to be this. That exhaust note, the fact that it's coming from behind, all of that together is just like a nice touch. And it doesn't have power steering, so you actually have to be like, turning like this and like actually feel like you're driving a sports car i like that a lot about the honda beat there you have it the good old honda beat now let's talk about the last car the suzuki cappuccino which is the same price as the beat which is eight thousand dollars is this one the most worth it so this is a 1993 suzuki cappuccino what makes this one special is that it's faster than the other two by far it's a dual lever head cam 660 cc turbo i'm gonna pop the hood in a second but let's just focus on the exterior real quick it's a navy color, like a midnight blue with the white little accents, which to each his own. It has a limited badge. I feel like 
someone let me know as a cappuccino i feel like someone just put that there but maybe it is a limited maybe it has like some extra features i don't really know too much about cappuccinos but here's how it looks on the outside it has a unique like t-top like i could remove these two and keep this one or you can take all three off and just have a regular drop top here's the interior the seats are extra clean it has some cool like aftermarket speakers back there it has a little i'm not gonna call it a roll bar because it's not a roll bar but it has one of those little style bar that's what i'll call that now another look at the interior i love the wood grain with this steering wheel the steering wheel looks basically brand new if you can really look at it five speed of course power windows of course here's a look at the dash i think we all can agree that the honda is the most cool but this one does stop at 12 which is kind of insane i'm now going to close the door just so you can see how it is a lot tighter i obviously can't put my seat back like this is the most i can go back but even leg wise like i'll show you guys if you remember what it looks like on the honda like look it's pretty tight like my legs are going to be very tight this one is the most like bucket sporty feel like this one i wouldn't feel as comfortable going on like a 10 hour road trip if i went on that beat i'm not gonna lie to you at all i would feel comfortable as it can get in a two-seater car this one i feel like it's more of a, like a autocross or like a real like sporty feel which to each his own it's super cool when you're driving just around but when it comes to long drives this one is definitely not the most comfortable so now let's start it you have the same green little boost light that's in the jimny which is super cool starts right up let me pop the hood the way you do it is similar to the Jimny 2 where you have to pull that. Comes with a strut bar, which is nice. It has a lifter tick that's very common in Miatas. I don't really know if that's the case on these guys. But it doesn't look like it's shaking too much. I don't really see any real issues. That really could just be the fuel injectors too. But here's everything. There's a lot of aftermarket parts for this too. I've seen like intercooler pipes similar to the Jimny. You could buy a blow valve and stuff like that. Similar to the one we saw in um, JDM Hawaii. You guys remember that cappuccino. That one was crazy. I'll put a picture of it on the screen right now. That was a cappuccino that was done wild. But now, let me drive it to my friend. I'm going to have him help me remove these three. And they also fit in the trunks, which is super cool. Because you can kind of drive, take them off, put them on, take them off, put them on. And do all that good stuff. So I'll give you guys a POV from this angle to start. We'll go into first. The clutch is very good on this car, like extremely good. But I'm in first gear right now. All the way up to 20 with no issue, which is a pretty difficult in other K cars, but this one is taking it like a champ. Still in first gear. I'm gonna drive to my homie and let's remove the tops. So here's a look at the trunk. I just realized it comes with the little bags, which I've never seen before. You get all three bags. I feel like these bags in themselves are probably worth a couple hundred dollars, but storage wise, we could just focus really quickly. A lot more room than your beat. Not as much as the Alto, obviously, but you can fit like a couple book bags back here realistically with no issue. So let's cover these up right now. That's actually super cool. All right, so the way you remove the tops are just pushing this arrow down and doing this. So that's one side. I think this could come off. Yeah, look, this comes off just like this. It's that way, so boom. Zip it back up. Are you kidding me? Now let's go to the passenger side. Remember, same thing. You go down on the arrow. Just put that down. Flip this. Same for this. Go down, flip that. And now you should be able to pick this up. I can do it with one hand. It's not heavy at all. Now, if you technically want to drive like this, your little T-top feel, you can do that. You can go start your day chilling. But I don't want to do that. I want to give you guys a full experience. Ta-da! All three pieces. And it's kind of cool because the bags are actually marked. They're also a whole different size. But you can tell that this one is for this because it's just the longest and it's shaped a different size too so let's put this one in the bag close this up and now let's put all three of our roof back together as much as i love the miata it does not have a function like this all right so that's all situated now let's close the trunk and here we have it our convertible oh wait no there's even more all right so to take the last missing piece off you have to pull this to the side go up and then push it down like that and then this 
you press this button turn it like that and push that down as well and then boom you have your full convertible that is a complete transformation from what it was a couple seconds ago you drove the other two cars too which one's your favorite I love the Torbo on this, man. I ain't gonna yeah. use it, like. <laughs> It really is a drastic difference. I don't and know. Am I being biased? This I mean, is this tight. This is tight, though. We we agreed to that, right? This is tight. Like, tight as far as, as in, oh, like, yeah, yeah, space. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's not as comfortable as the B at yeah, all. It's, it's the same price as the B, too. It's just so feet. crazy because they look like they're the same, you know? Yeah. Like, this one, interior, I, I, I like it more. Yeah. Did you show them the wood? Yeah, show them the wood grain. This one being turbo is just a huge difference. Let's go on third. That was a good transition that to third, good, right? That's good, that's good. I be struggling to get to third for some reason. Like, and you said everybody shows with that, right? People who don't know how to drive stick, yeah. Damn, ouch. Second gear pull. <laughs> that's not, that's not actual like car, like real no, car fast. Yeah. I went back to neutral, got scared. Cappuccino. Second though? First. Uh -huh. <laughs> As someone that just drives a lot of K cars, like this one is just drastically faster and it has the same engine, like it's the same 660cc. But like if I was in my Jimny right now, I'd be in third. And right now I'm cruising in second. But I was asking you too, like, are you still in second? Yeah, like, like a cruising in second. In the Jimny, I'd be struggling. We give it a second gear pull over here. This is definitely the most fun driving experience out of the three, too. No, I'm not gonna wild out. It's gonna not shift gears. Like the fact that I could be in second all That's the way crazy, to yo. 60 kilometers is crazy. I might really buy a cappuccino while I'm in Japan. Like all jokes aside, I was talking about a lot of cars that I might potentially buy. If I could find a super clean cappuccino over there, all things JDM will be sending me one back. In conclusion, we have the three K cars here. And let me know in the comments, which one you guys think is the most worth it between the Alto for 75, the Cappuccino for eight and the Honda for eight. Me personally, I'm taking the Cappuccino just because this one needs the most work. And for me, I know I'm gonna wanna drive this thing balls to the wall, drive it all the way to Florida and stuff like that. And this one being the quickest just is a very big factor. Like I love my Jimny a lot. I think it's one of the best cars I've ever owned, but it's slow. It's slow and like I don't go off-roading if I'm going to be 100% honest. So like that isn't a big pro for me. I don't live in like Washington State and stuff like that. Like I live in New York City where I need a small car that's quick and fun and stuff like that. And this one checks almost all the boxes. It's only $500 more than that. And then when it comes to the beat, this one is just too perfect. So like for me, I wouldn't really have a lot of videos to make. I mean, it's better that I'd be wrapping like a, you know, a clearer canvas. But as much as I love a drop top, I'd rather a hard top slash drop top instead of just a drop top. Like that isn't, if I could choose between both, I'm always gonna take that. But you guys let me know in the comments, which one would you take? The Beat, Cappuccino, or Alto? I feel like a lot of people are probably gonna lean towards the Beat, but who knows, maybe they'll take this one. This one just has some imperfections that I like. But I'm in this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed that comparison. I wanna do more of these in the future. Maybe next time I'm here, I'll do one between the Acti and the Suzuki right here. Because yes, the Acti is a lot more loaded, but the Suzuki is a lot more cheaper. Like I'll show you guys this really quickly. Beautiful brown interior, Nardi wheel, AC, all the good stuff. But is it worth $2,000 more?